Hello everybody and welcome to this comprehensive video where I'm going to be talking about the Bosch 12 volt cordless router. I'm going to go over some of its features, my thoughts on those features and kind of make it a mixture of a overview and a review to help you work out if this is the tool for you or not. So let's get going. All right, so before we get stuck into anything, let's get the usual disclaimers out the way. As many of you are aware, Bosch sponsor this channel with tools and equipment and they help me out from time to time. This 12 volt router was one of the tools that they lent me in exchange for my feedback and review and also for product placement. However, in saying that, I have full clearance to say whatever I want about this tool, whether it's good, bad, anything, you can feel confident that this is an authentic review. And if you want to read up a little bit more about how I work with Bosch and all the other companies I work with, there is a affiliate disclaimer in the description below where you can read up of all the ins and outs of the agreements I have with various companies and how I keep these reviews and everything I do legitimate. Secondly, if you want to treat yourself to one of these routers as a result of watching this video, what you can do is purchase it through the link in the description and that will get me a small commission at no extra charge to you, which is a great way of giving me a tip as a thank you for the recommendation and helps me make more videos in the future, whether that's reviews, tutorials, tips, tricks, projects, whatever. It's a great way of supporting the channel at no extra cost to you. Right, so the Bosch 12 volt router. If you haven't seen one of these before, you are totally justified in thinking it looks weird. It does look weird. It's a very odd looking tool, completely off center, and you sort of look at it and think, how the hell is this thing used and what do you even use it for, to be honest? If you watched my video earlier this week where I was talking about my Bosch half inch router and how versatile and how many jobs it can do just in that one unit. This review is going to contrast that quite strongly because although this doesn't carry out a lot of tasks, the tasks it can do, it excels at and it is absolutely perfect for those operations. And the job that this tool is primarily made for is edge profiling, putting roundovers, putting chamfers on edges and being able to do it on the fly, whether that's going up vertical, whether that's working on a flat surface, whether that's going from one end of the workshop to the other without having to worry about trailing cables. This is an easily portable chamfering and roundover tool that can just be used anywhere because of the fact it's cordless. And the fact that this tool is optimized for edge profiling gives reason as to why it is this weird shape. Because if I was to pop this, on the edge of a piece of wood that I wanted to put a chamfer or roundover on, you can see it plants itself there very securely and that is without the added weight of my hand putting pressure on this surface. Not only does the shape of the handle allow you to put more pressure there, but you've also got these two gripping points here, which make it a perfect area to put your fingers. This just makes it so easy to balance this on the edge of a piece of material. And again, that could be while it's upright or running vertical, whatever. The fact that you've got all of this surface area to now rest on makes it very, very good for this purpose. Contrasting strongly to when you work with a palm router such as this, the GKF600, something like that, you've still got those points to rest your fingers there, but you're having to balance that quite carefully on the edge of the material, not to mention the added weight of the cable trailing off the side of it. This thing being completely off center and being this weird shape means that it's perfect for edge profiling. So this router is one of the many tools that is gradually being added to the Bosch 12 volt range. And when you buy it, you normally buy it as body only, meaning that you have to pay extra for the batteries and things like that. And as it's body only, it comes in a cardboard box. But if you were wanting to slowly grow that 12 volt range, and let's say you were to get the 12 volt planer, which is a new one, the 12 volt planer comes in a hard case and there is actually a cutout for the router ready to go. So now you've got two of your previously corded tools in one handy toolbox and ready to take with you on site or around the workshop or wherever you need to. And it's very nice and portable. But we are focusing on the router today. So as an overview of some of the specs on this, as I said, it's a 12 volt battery. We got power in this and I've opted for three amp hour this because it keeps the compact size of the router and if I'm cycling two three amp hour batteries, then I find usually by the time I run the first one flat, the second one is already charged and just cycling those is generally all I need. However, if you're finding that you're running one of them flat before the other one's finished charging, then you could just jump up to the four amp hour should you need. However, that's gonna make it a little bit blockier on the top. For me, I don't need it. I'd rather keep it nice and lightweight like this, but it is something you can do. 
And with this Bosch state that you can run this for about 23 feet per amp hour of the battery. So with this one in theory, I could do just short of 70 feet. In reality, I tend to do very light chamfers of this, so I get a lot more out of it, I reckon. I've never actually measured it, but I'm pretty sure I get more than 23 feet per amp hour out of these. Statistics like that obviously vary on how fast you're pushing it, how much of a depth of cut you're working with, the density of material. There's a lot of variables in it, but like I say, for me, I get a lot more than 23 feet, I reckon. And then within this tool, you have a brushless motor, which like without going into the details of how a brushless motor works and the pros and cons of either, effectively what it means is you get a longer lasting tool and it makes more efficient use of the power that is provided through the battery. If I was to describe it in simple terms, a brushed battery is like riding a bike with the brakes lightly applied. Those brakes are obviously going to start wearing down and it's also going to mean that it's going to be slightly harder to pedal that bike. It's pretty much the same with a brushed motor. However, with this being brushless, it's like taking those brakes off the bike and then having full use of that power that you're providing through the pedals and those brakes are going to last a lot longer. That's the simplest way of describing a brushed motor like you would find in this thing. So in regards to using this tool, you've got a coarse depth adjustment and you've got a fine depth adjustment and you've got a lock on the back of it in order to lock in your setting. So in order to work the fine adjustment, simply turn this screw and that is gonna slowly raise or lower the head in relation to the base. And then if you wanna make a quick coarse adjustment, just push that in and you can set it to your rough position before then finally dialing in that final setting. Once you're there, flip it round, give it a lock, and then that's it, locked in place. Now, with regards to changing cutters in this tool, this is supplied with a quarter inch collet, and I'm pretty sure that is the only one you can get with it, and is the only one that Bosch and myself would recommend you actually use in this tool. By the time you step up to something with an eight millimeter shank, then you're probably using this tool for something it shouldn't be used for. Quarter inch shank tools should be all you need for this. And in this instance, I'll show you how to attach a chamfer bit to it. Firstly, pop it on its side and remove the battery and just double check for whatever reason. I'm gonna make sure I've got full extension of the base in order to give maximum access to the collet. Thread the bit in through the bottom and then up to the required line on the cutter. And the spindle lock on this is actually this red tab here. All you do is you lift that out, and then as you're pulling it out, spin the collet, and you should feel it, there you go, lock into position, and that has now locked the collet in place. And then you can carefully tighten it without having to hold a spindle lock in place like you would on other routers. That makes it really easy, and also means that you can quite simply do it in your hands as well, should you need to, without trying to hold down a spindle lock or something around the collet area. So once that's in there, pop that back in, and then battery goes in the top, and that's it. That's the cutter in there. And apart from setting the depth, that is ready to be used. You might also notice that there is no variable speed available on this tool. It is, comes as one fixed speed, which is 13,000 RPM and pretty much covers the entire range of profiling cutters that you're likely to fit within this tool. Now, one of the downsides for this tool and quite rightly so as well, is that it is quite obviously designed for right-handers. When you pick this up with your right hand, the switch is right next to your thumb. Whereas if you pick this up with your left hand, you're then covering that switch. Now this is completely fair enough. There obviously wouldn't be any point in optimizing it for left-handers. And I think having the switch somewhere on the front like that might be a bit of a stretch and quite easy to flick on and off halfway through use as well. Whereas something like that is pretty out of the way and the fact that it's recessed into the body as well means that it's unlikely to get knocked or anything like that yet is very easy to turn off should you need to turn it off in an emergency or something like that there's also no extraction accessories available for this tool which can be seen as both a positive and a negative because as a negative obviously there's going to be a little bit of dust in the air but you should only be doing small profiles of this so realistically there's not going to be a whole lot of dust kicked up from that but on a positive note, it means that it keeps this tool incredibly compact and you're not having to worry about attaching different things to it. And also it means that you don't have to worry about plugging in your extractor and therefore make all the cordless benefits of this tool pointless because you're having to plug in a corded extractor. For me, I think the fact that they haven't added extraction accessories to it is a positive because it just keeps the tool simple, keeps it compact, and it's something you can just pick up and get going straight away. Now, if you're a left-hander like myself and you're worried about the fact that this is quite obviously optimized for a right-hander, don't be put off too much because it is still very easy to use as a left-hander. You just push the trigger down with your middle finger or your index finger 
it's not the end of the world. It just means that it's not there next to your thumb. Realistically, when I'm using this, I've held it like that before. I've held it like it's supposed to. I've held it in all sorts of ways because this, although it's got an odd shape to it, it makes it very versatile in how it can be held. And so the fact that it is made for right-handers, it doesn't really change much, to be honest. Now, when I turn that on then, you might have also noticed that it's pretty quiet as well. When you use it, I would still wear ear defenders because the sound of the cutting action might be somewhat damaging to your ears, but for light edge trimming and stuff like that, you could probably just get away with wearing eye protection and you'll be fine. And also another feature of this is the fact that it's got drop detection, which isn't something I've ever had a need for, but if I was to accidentally drop this during use, I can be safe in the knowledge it will instantly cut out upon impact. And that means that it's unlikely to get tangled in anything that's on the floor and just cause damage to the motor, the thing that it lands on. So I can do this from a couple of feet. You see it completely cuts out, battery is still in there. I can just turn it off and back on again. And there you go, drop detection. <laughs> Another safety feature that I like about this is when the spindle lock is engaged and you try and turn it on, obviously it's not going to turn on because the spindle lock is locking the collet from spinning. But if I push that in, it's not going to turn on because you can see this little flashing light. And also if I turn it off and then try and turn it on again, it's not going to do anything. It's still flashing that light. And that shows that there is something inherently wrong with the tool or something did go wrong during setup. And in order to reset that, you have to take the battery out. Let's just turn it off. Take the battery out, pop it back in, and then it will start up again. And I think the fact that that wouldn't turn on, even after turning off and on and re-engaging the spindle lock is a really good safety feature because like in this scenario, let me just remove the battery while I do this. Let's say you engage the spindle lock and you're ready to change cutter. You pop the cutter in, get that finger tight on there, and then you think, oh, do you know what? I might go make a cup of tea. Let's go make a cup of tea. You go and make your cup of tea, you go and drink your cup of tea, and then you come back. And then without really thinking, you just go and do that, that, pop this in, and then try and turn it on. So in this instance, that spindle lock has just saved me. I can pop that back in, it's still not turning on. I can turn it off, I can turn it back on again, it's still not gonna turn on. And what that's prevented me from doing, even if I try and turn that off and on again, this cutter is not tight in there at the moment. Before tightening it up with the wrench, I got distracted and went off and drank my cup of tea. And that safety feature prevented me from using the cutter without actually properly tightening it. Now, of course, there's many variables in that scenario. You know, I might have come back and just popped that spindle cutter back in and then turned it on. Obviously it wouldn't have protected against that, but having that fail safe is better than nothing in my opinion. All right, so I'll go ahead and show you this router in use. I'm gonna swap the chamfer cutter out for a eight millimeter roundover cutter, which is one of the larger profiles that I've cut on this router. However, as you'll see, it is perfectely capable of doing so. We'll run it along the edge of the plywood here. So make sure the depth is fully extended, make sure the spindle lock is on. And then we'll just quickly untighten this, cut her out, replace it with this one, and then up to the line on the cutter, and carefully crank that round. Spindle lock in, and then pop in the battery. And you might have noticed here that I've actually left the router on while plugging in that battery, but it hasn't started, which uncovers another really good safety feature about this in the fact that you can't plug the battery in and then it instantly fire up, which is very easily done when you don't have like a spring release trigger or something like that, where it's just a simple on and off like this. And it's quite easy to accidentally leave it on, then having that feature is really useful. Obviously it's disengage it, just turn it off and then back on again and you're running. So for setting this up, we're obviously gonna use the coarse depth adjustment to begin with. So push that in and bring it down to roughly the required depth. And then we'll use the fine adjustment to carefully dial it in. Now this is one of the difficulties with the fine adjustment and the fact that it becomes quite restricted in there. It has got, it's got a nicely gripped surface and it is possible to make that adjustment somewhat easy. But sometimes if you're working with a resinous timber and it starts clogging up the threads and makes this a little bit sticky, it can be difficult to turn that fine adjuster and adjust the depth. So if you're finding that's a struggle, just give this a little wipe down with some three in one oil and also the thread, make sure there's no resin in there and it makes it run nice and smoothly that way. So for a round over, I'm gonna set it so it's too shallow to begin with and then we'll bring it up to the final depth. Obviously just locking it on the back here and then starting at this end of the board, you see I pop it up on there, bearing's gonna engage and then that is just resting there. So. Start it up. All right, 
first pass done. Little step on the top, so we'll just lower it a tiny bit on that fine adjuster. Lovely. And so there you go, that is my comprehensive overview slash review of the Bosch 12 volt cordless router. All in all, I absolutely love this tool. It is definitely up there with one of my favorite tools in this entire workshop, not even an understatement. The simplicity, the shape, and just how well it performs at that single task is what sells it to me. And it's pretty much become an extension of my hand by this point. I say this to everyone when they're thinking about buying it. When you first turn this on and you do that first chamfer and you do that first roundover. In my case, I ran around this entire workshop like a nut job, putting roundovers on everything. On this post going up the left of my workbench, there's a huge roundover on that. On the pillar going across where I've got my lighting, there is no need for a chamfer on that. There's gonna be no human interaction with it, but there's a chamfer on there because I was able to just do it above my head like that. I was pretty much looking for any, well I say I was, I still do look for any opportunity to use this tool and put a roundover or a chamfer onto something. I absolutely love it. Of course, I did mention a few downsides with it as well. The fact it's optimized for right-handers, like could be a downside I suppose, but it's not like you can't get around it. And the fact there's no extraction on there might be a downside to some people. For me, it's actually a positive in this case and also the fact that this can get a little bit stiff on the fine adjustment and be somewhat difficult to access from time to time is a small downside, but by taking care of the tool, making sure that it's all clean in those threads and it's well oiled, not one of those issues that I just said should be a problem at all. So all in all, despite the fact this tool cannot do everything, the jobs that it can do, it does brilliantly. And I really recommend it to those of you who just want something that's nice and handy around the workshop that you can just pick up and get to work with. It's an amazing tool. So as I said at the start of the video, if you do want to grab one of these for yourself, there is a link in the description to an affiliate link, which means that I get a small commission at no extra cost to you. If you do want to buy one of them and you want to sort of give me a tip as a thank you for the recommendation, that's pretty much the best way to go about it. If you're not buying one of these tools, but you still enjoyed the video, please don't forget to press the like button below. That really helps me out. And if you haven't already, subscribe in order to get latest updates on tips, tricks, videos, tutorials, reviews, projects, the lot I do pretty much anything around fine woodworking I either have covered in the past or will cover in the future. So stick around if you want to get those latest updates and I will see you in the next video. Cheers.